My mind was racing as fast as my tiny little heart. I needed to get back to my clothes, but they were lying in a heap on the floor. If I could do that, I could get the riptide. I could take it out of my pocket. And what? I couldn't uncap the sword. Even if I did, I couldn't hold the sword. I squirmed helplessly as CC brought me over to the guinea pig cage and opened the wire door. Me and my discipline problems, Percy, she warned. They'll never make a good classroom pets, but they might teach you some manners. Most of them have been in this cage for 300 years. If you don't want to stay with them perfectly, permanently, I suggest you... Annabeth's voice called, Miss Cece? Cece cursed in ancient Greek. She plopped me into the open cage and closed the door. I squeaked and clawed at the bars, but it was no good. I watched Cece hurriedly kick my clothes under, under the loom, just as Annabeth came in. I almost didn't recognize her. She was wearing a sleeveless silk dress like Cece's, only white. Her blonde hair was newly washed and combed and braided with gold. Worst of all, she was wearing makeup, which I never thought Annabeth would be caught dead in. I mean, she looked good. Really good. I probably would have been tongue-tied if I could have had anything except re 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 come out. But then, there was also something totally wrong about it. It just wasn't Annabeth. She looked around the room and frowned. Where's Percy? I squealed up a storm, but she didn't seem to hear me. Cece smiled. He's having one of our treatments, my dear. Now don't worry. You look wonderful. What did you think of your tour? Annabeth's eyes brightened. Your library is amazing. Yes, indeed, Cece said. The best knowledge of the past 3,000 millennia. Anything you want to study, anything you want to be, my dear. An architect? Ha, huh, Cece said. You, my dear, have the makings of a sorceress like me. Annabeth took a step back. A sorceress? Yes, my dear. Cece held her hand up. A flame appeared in her palm and danced across her fingertips. My mother is Hectate, the goddess of magic. I know a daughter of Athena when I see one. We are not so different, you and I. We both seek knowledge. We both admire greatness. Neither of us needs to stand in the shadow of men. I don't understand. Again, I squealed my best, trying to get Annabeth's attention. But she either couldn't hear me or didn't think the noises were important. Meanwhile, the other guinea pigs were emerging from their hutch to check me out. I didn't think it was possible for guinea pigs to look mean, but these did. There were half a dozen with dirty fur and cracked teeth and beady red eyes. They were covered with shavings and smelled like they really had been in here for 300 years, without getting their cage cleaned. Stay with me, CC was telling Annabeth. Study with me. You can join our staff, become a sorceress, learn to bend others to your will. You will become immortal. But... You are too intelligent, my dear, Cece said. You know better than to trust any silly camp for heroes. How many great female half-blood heroes can you name? Um, Atlanta, Amelia Earhart? Bah, men get all the glory. Cece closed her fist and, fist and extinguished the magical flame. The only way to protect power for women is sorcery. Medea, Calypso, now those are powerful women. And me, of course, graves of all. You, Cece? Circe! Yes, my dear. Annabeth backed up and Circe laughed. You need not worry. I mean you no harm. But what have you done to Percy? Only helped him realize his true form. Annabeth scanned the room. Finally, she saw the cage. And she saw me scratching at the bars. All the other guinea pigs were crowding around me. Her eyes went wide. Forget him, Circe said. Join me and learn the ways of sorcery. But... Your friend will be cared for. He'll be shipped to a wonderful new home in the mainland. The kindergartners will adore him. Meanwhile, you will be wise and powerful. You'll have all you ever wanted. Annabeth was still staring at me, but she had a dreamy expression on her face. She looked the way I had when Cersei enchanted me into drinking the guinea pig milkshake. I squealed and scratched, trying to warn her, trying to snap her out of it, but I was absolutely powerless. Let me think about it. Annabeth murmured. Just give me a moment alone to say goodbye. Of course, my dear, Cersei coats. One minute. Oh, and so you have absolute privacy. She waved her hand and the iron bar slammed down over the windows. She swept out of the room and I heard locks on the door click shut behind her. The dreamy look melted off Annabeth's face. She rushed over to my cage. All right, which one of you? Which is you? I squealed, and so did all the other guinea pigs. Annabeth looked desperate. 
She scanned the room and spotted the cuff of my jeans sticking out from under the loom. Yes! She rushed over and rummaged through my pockets. But instead of bringing out Riptide, she found the bottle of Hermes multivitamins and started struggling with the top. I wanted to scream at her this wasn't the time for taking supplements. She had to draw the sword. She popped the lemon chewable in her mouth just as the door flew open and Cersei came back in, flanked by two of her business suited attendants. Well, Cersei sighed, how fast a minute passes. What is your answer, my dear?